Hello everyone, welcome. I'm Katie, a member of the CK12 team, and my colleague Lindsay and I will be running today's webinar, Adopting CK12 Curriculum. We're so glad you've joined us. Before I introduce you to Lindsay and review some, I'm going to review some information about the CK12 Certified Educator Program. And I wanna go over a few logistics about the Zoom webinar platform first as well, to make sure everyone is still using those right windows as you guys work your way through. So, just a reminder that the Q&A window is for any questions that you wanna make sure that we answer, and that's what we'll check. Um, we get tons and tons of questions during these webinars, so make sure if you want us to confirm that we answered it and go through there, post it there. And then that chat window is already super active, so go ahead and access that and send to all panelists and attendees if you want to kind of share who you are, where you're coming from, and any kind of thoughts on the program as well. Um, so from there, for the Certified Educator Program, there are two major links that you can work off of. The registration page, if you're looking to add any extra webinars, ck12.org slash jumpstart, and our program page, which is slash certified 2017, which actually can now be gotten to from just the Certified Educator Program link at the bottom of any page on CK12. So you can get there, and then there's an option to register from there. So if you're having trouble, scroll down and find that on our tools like right near that bottom footer on all of our pages. So I think it, with that, I'm going to turn this over to my colleague, Lindsay, to get you started with today's content. Great. Thank you, Katie. And thank you to all of you for joining us today. In this webinar, we're going to be covering the following topics in relation to adopting CK-12 curriculum. First, we're going to do an overview of CK-12, reminding you that for 10 years, we've been improving our resources with a focus on student learning. Next, we'll talk about why users choose CK-12. One of the biggest points there is that we have quality digital content that is easy to customize and localize. We have adaptive practice and interactives, and of course, one of the main reasons that people like it is that there's no barrier of entry, because it's free. Next up, we'll be helping you plan for adoption of CK-12. We're gonna help you figure out what things you need to do before you begin this process, whether you're doing this as an individual, or as a school, or as a district team. And finally, we're gonna go through potential steps for adoption, whether you are choosing to customize a Flexbook, use concept-based learning, or adaptive practice. Our main goal is that by the end of the session, you understand why you might want to adopt and how to adopt CK-12 curriculum. You'll also be coming up with the exact steps you might be taking to make that happen. We're also very fortunate to have a special guest with us today. Here shortly in the presentation, we will welcome Dr. Mike Nelson, who is the Director of Curriculum and Assessment in Coeur d'Alene School District in Idaho. As someone who's been through this adoption process with his school district, he's an awesome resource to have. I'm gonna be asking him some questions live and you all will have the opportunity to submit any questions you might have for him as well. Great, thanks. Let's get started by talking about CK-12. So the thing about CK-12 is that we're all about student learning. We wanna improve student learning. And with that, there's a few key things you should know about us. So first, we are a nonprofit. And more importantly, we're a non-revenue nonprofit. We do not charge for anything that we do, whether it's our digital flexbooks, interactives, or adaptive practice, or even this summer's program. So everything we offer to the world is for free, and we think that it's really important because we believe that students all over the world should have the right to quality education and quality content. And our digital platform allows us to do that. So we were founded in 2007. So this is a pretty special year for us, marking 10 years that we've been making a difference in education. Plus, this means kind of that long-term piece that you don't have to worry that we're this new tech company that might not be around in a bit. We're kind of here and established as well. So if you're attending this session because you're confident you want to build a Flexbook, that's great. Um, but we are gonna challenge you to think even beyond that Flexbook with CK-12's concepts and modalities, such as videos, simulations, and practice. Basically, the different ways that students can learn a concept. And as we said, we're free and it's really important so there's no premium level that requires you to pay for parts of our site. We just ask that you sign up and have students and teachers use CK-12 so that they can take full advantage of the myriad resources available here. A lot of people ask how our content is created. 
Well, the way the major publishers create content and get content to students is fairly similar to the way that we do ours. Our content has been created by domain experts and subject matter experts. We have over 100 PhDs, professors, NASA scientists who have created content for CK12 or donated their content to CK12. Our content is vetted by teams of independent reviewers and we align it to state and national standards. The end result is that after 10 years, CK12 can offer complete coverage for science and math in middle school and high school. And the exciting thing is now we're adding more and more content for our elementary students in grades five through 12. Or no, let's try that again. Elementary students in grades K through five. The content you get on CK12 is quality content, but more importantly, because it's customizable, you can then change the content so that it's best for your students because nobody in the world knows their students better than the classroom teacher. So let's talk a bit about the first four years of CK12. When we started out a decade ago, you'll remember there wasn't a lot of technology available in classrooms. Maybe there were a couple of computers off on the side of the room, but very few classrooms 10 years ago were one-to-one. -one. So CK12 started out as a platform where people would come to use our flexbooks what we call digital textbooks, um, and customize them. During our first four years, we developed some amazing flexbooks that were replacements for the books that you could get through a publisher. And then as technology in the classroom expanded, we were able to move beyond these flexbooks and learning from just a textbook and into concept-based learning. So with concept-based learning, we offer a variety of modalities, these different ways that you can see there. And one of these is that core part of adaptive practice. With adaptive practice, now students can answer questions, and based on their responses, our system can adapt to what they know. It'll give them harder questions or fill in the gaps to what they don't know. CK12 has a bunch of robust quality content offered in the moment. While students are answering questions, we can offer that content and help them, get, and help them better understand the concepts that they need so that they can be successful. As you move forward, we want you to think of CK12 not just as that digital textbook organization, but as an organization that is focused on improving student learning using this concept-based learning option. Whether you came to this program thinking you were updating that textbook or you already knew about the breadth of resources we offer, um, we really just encourage you to think about that idea of student learning in general and how you can take that and use CK12 simulations, interactives, practice, and customize that flexbook to include these other ways of learning. We have mentioned concept modalities in a few of our other sessions because it's important understanding the foundation of our concept-based learning philosophy. What makes CK12 unique is that we offer a variety of different modalities, like the ones that you see on the screen here, what we call our reads, our simulations, our Plix interactives, our videos, Katie just mentioned the adaptive practice, and our RWAs that stand for real-world applications. These are just some of the ways that we offer to students to learn it their way. So when you're thinking why CK12, uh, this is one of the obvious reasons why people choose CK12. Your classroom comes to life with CK12 modalities. We know that students all learn in different ways. So if we can offer a variety of modalities which touch on different learning styles, then students might be more engaged. Modalities make it possible for the digital textbook to be interactive, including things like videos or links to our clicks and simulations. Like I said, people choose CK12 because they know that our platform provides students with the highest quality content available through customization and localization. CK12 is available on any device from smartphone to Chromebook, tablet, laptop, desktop, or can even be printed, as some school districts still don't quite have that technology yet and are looking for a print solution. Another great thing about CK12 is that all of our artifacts have a unique URL which can be shared. So if you create a Flexbook, you can share it with your parents. And it's something they can follow along with with their students learning. One of the biggest frustrations I, I hear from parents is that they feel disconnected from what's happening in the classroom. By using CK12, Teachers can share the URLs of anything they create or use with parents, and parents can be included. Other educators can see what's happening as well. And remember, the price is right. We offer everything for free. 
Another reason to think about using CK12 is because we've done the heavy lifting for you. CK12 content has matured over the last 10 years and we're constantly updating it. We always consider it to be a foundational base, content that you need to get you started. You're welcome to use it as is, but if you're customizing, we've done 80% of the heavy lifting and you can come in and add your own customization to it. You can bring in localized content, so bring in things from your own community. For instance, in Tullahoma, they've included chapters about the Grand Old Opry in their social studies and hi history curriculum. And that's great because they can include people that have performed there that even went to school in their district. In Missouri, they can add in more information about tornadoes, or in California, more about earthquakes. This kind of customization is really important because not only does it help address some of the local state standards, but it also helps engage the students. So if you think today we're going to do 80% of the heavy lifting, we've already done that part. It's already available for you on our site. You can come in and you can make some changes, you can localize it, you can adapt it to the ever-changing state standards, and what you end up with is quality content that is all about your students. So to further explore why CK12, here is a video from Karen Blaine, the Chief Innovation Officer in El Paso, Texas. So I, I think with CK12, the innovation comes into play, not just in going from print to digital. You know, if we just had, here's a static page that's on your computer rather than in a textbook, I don't think there's anything truly innovative about that. Um, but when that digital resource is customizable by the teacher, but also um, when that teacher can customize to a point where the learning can be personalized for the student, the student can take multiple paths whether within that um, resource or in connected resources that are within the CK-12 uh, arena. Um, the different, the study guides and those types of things that a student can choose the personalization. A student can choose a path uh, to their own learning and a teacher can set up the conditions for that. And that's something we're moving toward in our district is the active learning framework where teachers are making the plan for the learning and facilitating the learning that is then owned by the students and driven by the students. So choices in path and pace and product and that sort of thing. So students set goals for their learning, the teacher set up the conditions for all the available resources, which is, you know, 10 different kids in one class may take 10 different paths and approach the resources in CK-12 in 10 different ways. So having that highly customizable aspect as well as the adaptive piece of it um, that takes a student to where they don't even realize they need to be <laughs> is pretty genius. So that's just one perspective. Um, like we said, it's, it's our 10 year anniversary. And so we've been traveling across the country and kind of collecting a lot of our user stories from teachers and administrators and students. And you can view those at our new testimonials page. It's accessible in the footer of most of our pages um, and you can go and you can hear more people from around the country what they have to say. Um, just a reminder of throughout this presentation we will stop for Q&A. Um, I guess we haven't really touched on anything that you might have a burning question about at this moment but um, so we're gonna we're gonna keep going here but do use that Q&A window to type in anything that you'd like us to answer as we go along. Um, but right now, I'm going to bring on a user who um, I referenced earlier, um, had the pleasure of meeting Dr. Mike Nelson and Coeur d'Alene back in January when they were buried in snow. Um, so let's see if he can turn on his camera, and I'm going to try to turn on mine here at CK12 Central, give you a little glimpse of the room I'm in. Um, let me stop sharing. And let's see if Mike can. Ah, there you are. Hi, everybody. Hello, Hello Dr. Nelson. I'm um, hoping you're all, all seeing us. Usually I'm behind the. the I know. Computer, I'm, I'm so sorry. And I feel so bad now that the uh, you showed the picture of me all dressed up and then I'm in my <laughs> summer wear here. But just to prove to everybody, it is not summer in Coeur d'Alene, so, or it's not uh, winter yet after that great introduction. Yes, Lindsay was uh, able to see our district's work uh, a couple of months ago, and we were absolutely buried in snow. So uh, it is a little bit better out here. Awesome. Well, thank you for taking a time out. You know, I, I know you 
you should be relaxing by the lake, but I know you're busy working on other things preparing for the school year. Um, but I really wanted our users to, to hear from you. Um, we're going to bring you on again a little bit later in the presentation after we talk more specifics about the adoption steps. But um, right now, maybe you could just introduce yourself a little bit and tell us some of kind of the unique things about Coeur d'Alene. And then I just talked about why people might choose CK12. Maybe tell us why your district with so many choices, why you guys decided to go with CK12. Well, I, I have a lot of different options for you. And, and first of all, greetings everybody from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with the geography of our state, uh, our state is very much like an L, I guess, for those of you who are watching home. Uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho is this little part of it right here between the states of Washington and Montana. Uh, we are located about 40 minutes between uh, either of those two borders. And uh, for us as a district, it, we went through about an eight-month process of adoption. The biggest thing for us is we wanted to see how CK12 would stand up against traditional content. Uh, so we did an adoption that invited about 120 different titles from throughout our nation. Uh, we knew that we wanted to move towards the next generation science standards before our state had. Uh, so we knew we had to have tools that were going to be flexible and adaptable to be able to meet those needs. So the first thing that we did was we looked at all of the titles that were available upon next gen. And several of them did rise to the top. Uh, and one that was consistent throughout all of our grade levels was CK-12. Uh, there were several reasons for that. Number one, that uh, we are job embedded staff collaboration. So every Monday, all of our teachers come together. And the fact that we could take all of the content that is being generated in all of our classrooms and concatenate it together to be able to say, you know, what really do we in Coeur d'Alene value? CK12 was a platform that we could do that in, which nobody else could. I know uh, Lindsay had talked a little bit about Tullahoma. Well, Coeur d'Alene is in a geographically diverse area. We have a lot of uh, native uh, challenges around our area, but at the same time, we also have a lot of growth. So we were able to put uh, not only some environmental challenges about algae blooms, uh, but also how Coeur d'Alene has grown rapidly over the last several years and how uh, that, uh, that level of growth actually impacts other systems that we have as well. Again, CK12 is a platform. It is a content delivery service. We've been able to take those, those textbooks or flex books or content areas that have already been there, and we've been able to personalize it to our own. So really, when it came down to it, uh, there was no contest for us. Uh, we adopted CK12 in grades 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, uh, and uh, we have been working collaboratively throughout the last year. Uh, to be able to bring things uh, not only content driven for us, but also uh, connected to our community. So that was just the first thing, the adaptability and the flexibility piece of it. Uh, the other thing was that it was a technical uh, platform. Uh, in our district, we are close to one-to-one. -one. We are not completely one-to-one, -one, but we are a bring your own device district. And so we had students who were using their cell phones. We had some students who were using Chromebooks. We had some students who were doing PCs or Macs. And it didn't matter, it all came out the exact same way. We even had some of our teachers who initially were kind of where Lindsay was talking about, where they really wanted to have that physical book into their hands. So we even printed a couple of copies of it as well, but within about six to eight weeks, those printed copies started coming back because they saw how students could get into the content, master the content, use some of the adaptive tools within CK12, but then they had a platform also that they could share these little subgroups that were going out. And when a student had a, an interest to be able to uh, go into a different area or do some deeper study, they didn't have to go to Google. They just linked directly within our own CK12 content. And it's just going to get better from there. We're simply at the, uh, at the beginning of it in our first year. Oh, that's perfect. I love hearing your enthusiasm. That's awesome. Um, You're muted, Lindsay. I, there you go. Am I? You now you're there. Now. Okay, awesome. Um, yeah, I think I think you just set the stage nicely for um, the the kind of whys and you know of of how you guys got your start. Where the next piece that we're going to bring you on later for is to find out more about how you guys did it. Of you know who was working on these books. Where did you start? What did your timeline look like? So um, I'm going to let you think about that a little bit while we continue with the presentation. And then for any of our users who want to ask Dr. Nelson questions. Um, be putting those in the Q&A window and we'll come back to you here in a few minutes, okay?
So signing off for now. Um, I'm going to take back over the screen and share my presentation again. Just a second here. Uh, sharing my screen. And there you go. Okay, so we've covered some of the why you might consider using CK12, but um, you guys are here. You're already invested in this, um, this summer program, your summer learning. So perhaps you've already figured out that CK12 is the one for you. And then you need to figure out what the next steps are. So um, when working with educators, um, one way that we frame this whole adoption process is by asking five questions to these educators. So a good one to start with is who is involved? Then what is your initial goal? Will you be using a Flexbook as a core component? What does your timeline look like? And how might you want or need to customize content? So Katie is gonna break down each of these questions for you. So hopefully you can um, start formulating some answers. Great, thanks Lindsay. Um, so this first question is who is involved? And you guys are probably coming from different backgrounds and different situations. Um, so the first thing you have to decide is, are you as an individual, interested in using CK12 materials within your own class? Are you kind of adopting CK12 for your class environment by yourself? Um, or are you part of maybe a whole department? Like let's say the whole science department has decided to adopt CK12 curriculum. And then you can work as a team and customize together and what, you know, what that might look like. Um, or even maybe a whole school district, state, or even country that's kind of trying to incorporate resources into their standard education and they want to make sure that they do them kind of across the board um, whether for one subject or multiple subjects so the next question is what is your initial goal and so i kind of hinted at this you know if you're a single teacher that's looking for your classes um, are you looking to do that you know if you're only teaching one course then clearly that would be probably the course that you'd want to focus on customizing um, if you're a department or a school, you might want to start with one subject area and talk about multiple courses within that subject. Um, so biology and chemistry, um, we have lots of schools that start with a single subject as kind of a way to work and build up to using CK-12 across their school. Um, you could look at CK-12 across subject areas. Maybe you say, you know what, I have multiple teams of teachers that just want to take this and use it. They love it. We're going to start now and we're going to do a bunch of different course subjects all at the same time. Um, and then the last question is, are you looking to actually use or customize a CK-12 flexbook? So that would be kind of your digital textbook part as the core of what you're working on. Or are you really just looking for, you know, round one, year one, adopting some of those other modalities and maybe using some reads and some videos and some simulations um, and kind of looking at all of those options, but not necessarily build a whole new textbook curriculum or use a whole new textbook curriculum, but use the resources CK12 has. Um, so that's some of the things you want to consider when you're thinking about your goal for this piece. The next question is, as we were just talking about, that idea of using a flexbook as a core component. And this really, really matters. So we wanted to bring it up again and really talk about that idea of if you're using it as a core component, your way of approaching adopting CK12 is probably gonna include some of that customization piece and that use piece. Whereas if you're thinking, I'm just gonna stick with the modalities as is and pick and choose and use pieces here, you can do that within a Flexbook or you could do that kind of individually. Um, but whether you wanna do that as a full curriculum or kind of as the supplemental pieces, um, and I wouldn't say concept-based learning is supplemental, but that if you were just using parts of that, that would be supplemental. Um, that's kind of another question you wanna answer as you go through. Next would be this timeline. So we have some teachers that discover CK12 when they're browsing across the internet, looking for a resource for later that day or week. Um, and maybe they just wanna start using resources in their class tomorrow. Um, or other ones are saying, okay, well, it is now, June and we start again in August or September, or, you know, whatever your kind of fall schedule looks like. We have the next two months to build out any new curriculum we want. And so what would that look like 
in terms of saying, I want to have at least this book or this set of books or maybe all these books in a condition that we can start using in the fall. And the cool thing is that you could start using them and continue to customize them throughout the year. It doesn't have to be a hard fixed deadline because it's digital. Um, but you want to definitely think about kind of what that timeline looks like and whether it's for the fall, for multiple subjects, um, maybe for one subjects, but you're going to, sorry, one subject, but you're going to plan out multiple years um, and slowly convert over to CK12. Um, so all of those are things to take into account as you're planning. The last question is how might you want or need to customize content? Um, so standards in states, in at least the United States, I know some of you guys are from other countries, but they seem to be changing constantly based on updates and changes in policy and all the rest of it. Um, and so, you know, we've done some alignment that you can work off of, but as those continue to be tweaked all the time in 50 different states, um, you may need or want to customize a little bit further to meet the newest set of state standards. Um, so that's an option or a requirement for you as you're moving forward to consider. Um, the next part would be kind of adding pieces that aren't required, but that you want to include that maybe localize your content and add more relevance. Um, and also enhancing your content by incorporating images, interactives, and videos, um, even more than you, what you might already find within CK12 text. Okay, I think next I'm gonna show you um, just another really quick video um, of a middle school principal in Tennessee. I, I think it's obviously the future for, for education. And I think that CK-12 is only going to allow us to um, help to personalize and blend learning, which is, is the direction that our education program needs to head, not just Tillamacy schools, but the nation as a whole. We need to offer what the kids need. We need to offer directly what the kids need, in addition to the adults as well. So if we're not, if we're not personalizing it, you know, personalizing it using technology, then uh, we're falling behind. And and CK CK one two, it's one of those tools that that helps us uh, move forward. Okay, we are going to stop right now for um, a couple of questions that have come in. Um, seem to be some people wanting to know about. Uh, maybe some things related to attribution or what, what you can put in a Flexbook or can't put in a Flexbook. So, uh, Katie, why don't I have you talk a little bit about um, our licensing and, and what people are able to do on our site. So, we, yeah, as Lindsay said, we've had a couple of questions about um, I can't find a book for this or I have a textbook that I'd love to put online. How do I figure out if I can do that? Um, CK12's license is a Creative Commons non-commercial attribution license. Um, so what that means is that you can't use any of our materials for commercial purposes, um, and you need to make sure that you attribute anything that you're using within CK12. Um, anything that you have, like a traditional hardbound textbook sitting on your desk that is copyrighted by a company, would not be able to be used within our platform because we really wanted to kind of allow for that customization and that ease of access without charging anything. So we don't, the license doesn't allow you to kind of incorporate pieces that are there. Um, if you wrote your own textbook and you own all your own content and you have full rights to it, we can talk about um, maybe personally with you getting that onto our site um, instead of you adding it up piece by piece. So definitely contact us in terms of what that might look like. Um, but in general, you can add and customize your content, and we'll talk about some of those steps as well as we work our way through the steps of adopting CK12. Um, but you'll see CK12 created content on our site or donated content. And when we built this platform, we really realized that we needed to seed it with the content that wasn't license restricted, that allowed you to customize, that allowed you to work with that. Um, and so just make sure that as you're doing all of this work, that when you're adding in images or you're adding in other pieces, that it falls under that license and is copyright compliant. 
so next we had a question just about how CK-12 fits with STEM education. And, and like we said, um, CK-12 is primarily a STEM resource site. Um, we emphasize middle school and high school math and science. Uh, you will find some other curriculum on our site. Um, you, you, when you go to the CK-12 homepage and do some browsing, you'll see all the different branches of content that we have. And then different school districts, um, like ones we highlight many times in these presentations, El Paso, Tullahoma, they've gone beyond the STEM curriculum and they've started working on social studies and language arts. So we do have some um, user generated content in other subject areas, but we are primarily focused on um, math and science resources for middle and high school. So I think with that, um, we, Maybe I'll answer one more question um, and we'll save the question. Dr. Nelson's going to come on again in here. So we'll, we'll save that question for when we're talking to him again. Um, so feel free to keep adding questions for Dr. Nelson. Um, but the other question that we just got is how young is CK-12 good for? Um, and the answer to that is that we have core curriculum across math and science for middle school and high school. Um, however, between our resources and resources that teachers have created and used, there's curriculum all the way down to kindergarten. Um, and you'll find varying levels of resources for that depending on the subject and the grade and all of the rest of that. Um, but we do have schools that are using it all the way down through elementary school as well. Um, I would probably say that kind of that preschool area, I have yet to see resources on CK-12 for um, just based on the nature of our platform. Um, but otherwise, you know, elementary is starting to be built up more and more in that community area. Um, and then definitely as you work your way up from there. So choosing content's gonna be an area that we talk about um, here in this next section. Um, you know, once you've decided kind of who's involved and what your goal is, um, you know, and some like your timeline, uh, milestones, then it's time to get started. So here are some steps. This is how we're going to break it down for the next few minutes of um, step one is to choose your content. So we'll, we'll kind of cover that a little bit about how to find some of the resources. And uh, we've got a question right now kind of about, uh, you know, history content. And we're going to show you a schools page that might help answer some of those questions. But the second step is to customize and create your flexbook. Step three, spread the word. Step four, start using our content. And step five, support and development. So um, we're gonna, we're gonna again, we're gonna talk you through what we have in mind for these steps um, as you go through the adoption process. So that first step that Lindsay just mentioned is this idea of choosing content. So um, a couple of things to think about. As you can see here, you can search the schools option the standards aligned browser, you could create your own content from your library, you could browse our subject areas, um, or search community contributed. All of this content will get brought up, and we try to, if you look at that search result option, you can see that it's highlighted on a community contributed right now. Um, we keep our CK12 content separate, just so you know as you're working, um, and that content is content that we have created and partnered with and vetted and continue to update. Um, as you're exploring the community contributed content, just kind of make sure that anything that you pull from there is something that you want to use in your class. Different teachers have different standards on what they want to incorporate into their books and what they want to include in their classes. Um, you know, anything inappropriate, we would definitely contact them and remove from our site if it was a major issue. Um, but you want to make sure that you're just double checking that they always meet the standards of what you're looking for as you go through. Um, so that would be kind of that piece on looking to customize content um, and also just looking for, you know, from scratch or from across that place. So we're gonna look at those kind of two major things that we've been talking about. This is the answer to that STEM piece. Um, so we have middle school books for science. You'll see earth, life, and physical science concepts there, um, as well as some biology content that might kind of fit into that life piece. Um, you also see math for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Um, if you continue on to our high school flex books, you'll see our science content um, as well as our math content. And you can see that we've been building it up all the way up to calculus. Um, and then the science content covers kind of that physical science, physics, chem, biology, all the rest of those pieces as you work your way through. Um, and those are all great starting places to help you as you build and customize your content. Um, 
So let's talk about customizing and creating your Flexbook. So you wanna, if you're working with a team, like start by determining the team structure and responsibilities. Um, so if you're working individually, you're the only person involved, so no big deal. Um, but then once you kind of figure that out, you wanna update your content or start from scratch. So add in links or images, embed videos or practice, incorporate local examples and additional or even less material. You can cut out material. Um, this process is gonna look a bit different. And so as we continue on, you know, kind of that team versus individual, we'll keep noting that as we go. Um, and if you're not gonna customize content at first, then you don't really need to worry about this part, but I highly encourage you to consider customizing within CK12 down the road. Um, the response from students who buy into this curriculum even more because they know their teacher or school work to make their books just for them is kind of amazing to hear as we go around and talk to teachers. So how would you customize? So any book that you're looking at on our site, whether it's one created by CK12 or that a user has republished on our site um, under our license has the option to customize it on the left side. Um, and you can customize it and rename it and save it from there. And that's kind of your first step as you work your way through. The next part would be to go into that table of contents. And in addition to kind of the name at the top, you can use those drag arrows and the X's to add or delete content and start the editing piece as you work your way through. Okay, so we often have, as, as Katie said, some, some individuals customize a book from our site, but then we also see use cases where um, a department at a school building or you know, several schools across the district are working on creating curriculum. So we've developed some best practices for um, these groups of people who are wanting to, you know, take different chapters or split the work, but yet have one unified book. So next, Katie's going to outline a few of these best practices. And it's really just if you're interested in that collaborative piece of multiple people trying to come together on one book. So I would say that a lot of these best practices even work as well for kind of the individual. Um, so our system, anytime you customize, you're making a copy of that book. So it's not that you're opening that and editing our version, which we wouldn't, wouldn't want to do, or one of your colleagues is editing your version. That customize creates a separate copy of that book in your account. Um, and so if you're working as a team or a department, you may want to consider creating kind of like, in this case, a Coeur d'Alene science account where you have that science book that it lives so that you don't have multiple variations and you're not sure what the newest one is or whose account it lives in. Um, so keep that one copy of your book within your own account if you're working together, if you're working individually, or if you're working as a department, kind of a general account that you could access. The next thing is to limit your open CK12 editing tabs. Um, so every time you go in to edit something in CK12, it makes a new revision of that book so that you can work on that particular piece. Um, and so what you want to make sure is that if you're editing, you kind of stay in that tab in that window. Um, because if you start opening multiple revisions and then you save revision 50 and then you go back and you happen to have revision 40 open on a different tab and you're working on that and you save it, that will become your new revision and it will skip all of the work that you did in between. So as you're working, kind of limit your open editing tabs, whether as a team or individually as you're working. Um, the next thing with that in mind is to either edit the book within the editor. So you can do a lot of work. You saw that table of contents there that allows you to mix and match and rearrange or even add content from within that. But the other way to add to your Flexbook is when you're browsing on CK12 and you have the option to add to a Flexbook textbook. Um, so same deal. If you're adding, that's your kind of open window that you're working with. Um, and so you want to make sure that your book is saved and not in edit mode. Um, if you're doing something from outside of the book itself as you're working. Now the next thing is you'll see when you're editing any particular section that you have the option to save something as a draft or to finalize. Um, that allows you to make edits and maybe get pulled away in the middle and then continue to update as you go through. But nobody outside of the account that's accessing it, that owns that book, can see anything that hasn't been finalized. 
they'll see the last finalized version of any book or section. And so you want to make sure that when you're done making those changes that you choose to finalize each section so that others can see the updated content in that. And then the last piece is that we encourage you to publish your book. Um, so you can share finalized content with others using the URL or using our share options within groups um, or our little green share plane if you've seen that. Um, but if you want people to, to be able to search for that book within CK12, um, or if you want to add it to your school's page for easy access for students, you're going to need to publish that book as a whole so that they can access that content. All right, that all sounded highly technical and at times scary. And <laughs> it's really not either of those things. Um, and you guys might not even be at this stage. You're like, what did she just say? I've never tried to customize a Flexbook. So um, if you didn't understand any of that, it's okay. Um, the, the key takeaways, I guess, like even in-house, you know, when I started working on Flexbooks and some of my colleagues were working on the same Flexbook, uh, these are just things that we've learned over time, that it is best just to have one copy of the book in one account. And sometimes we're working with districts where, you know, Joe had the Flexbook in his account and Joe no longer works at that school district and nobody knows Joe's email address to get in. So this idea of one account is really uh, a best practice for a lot of reasons that might work. Um, and then this whole o open editing tabs, uh, if I'm sitting next to Katie and we're both working on the physics book, um, and I'm, I have a tab open and she has a tab open. Our system's just going to get confused if we both press save. It's not going to know whose we mean to be the real copy and like Katie said, what revision history we're on. So these are fairly intuitive that you'll figure out when you start working on books. Um, and we're going to talk about these again in your Flexbooks 101 and your advanced Flexbook editing. So we just had a question come in that I want to clarify. The finalize option means that you are done working on that book and you want people to see those updates. It does not mean that you can never edit that book again. You always have the choice to go back in and make more updates. It's just saying that for this round of editing, I'm done, I wanna finalize it, I wanna push it out there and let other people see it, um, but I can always, always, always go back and edit again down the road. So one of the places that we reference where you can start looking for, um, for a Flexbook that you might want to use is on our schools page. Um, if you're a teacher accessing our homepage, you'll see a little circle that's got this, that schoolhouse um, that's at the top of our slide here. Um, you'll see that on the homepage. And if you click on that, it'll give you a drop down menu for different states. And so um, since, again, Dr. Nelson's here from Coeur d'Alene, here's what their schools page looks like, where you can see these science books that they've developed for um, their different grade levels. So this is another place that you can go um, to see books that have been created by our users. Um, continuing on with some of our different steps of, um, you know, you, you've picked your content, you're, you're getting in, you're excited about CK12, you know that this is the answer for you. Uh, you probably need to, to spread the word a little bit. So, um, I mean, uh, Right now, you guys are all here learning about CK12 curriculum. So an obvious step is to tell everyone you know about these free resources. Uh, we recently created a brochure, which you guys are all seeing a screenshot of it there. Um, a good idea might be to take this brochure and use it to frame your discussions with others about CK12 resources. Um, we have linked that to our summer program page, but if you need just a one pager to, you know, um, quickly try to describe our different offerings, this is a, this is a solid overview for you. Um, whether you're working as an individual or in partners or in teams, you can always consider training others in using CK12. Um, you know, we have archives of all of our webinars that we've done throughout the school year and then these presentations that you guys might consider using to help train others. Um, In-house, we're working on a, a kind of more official teachers train teachers model that hopefully we'll be rolling out soon um, to help you guys facilitate these conversations. And then also start thinking, um, you know, it's summer for a lot of our users right now. Of if you're thinking about rolling out CK12 next year, maybe now's the time to talk to district officials or your, you know, administrators in your building and see if you can set aside some time, that precious time in your 
professional learning communities or um, professional development time, get that on the school calendar now of when you guys can have these conversations and when you can start working on it. And then step four is to actually start using this content. Um, so you're going to want to kind of think about how this gets implemented and the steps you need to take to get your students and teachers using it. Um, so this could be setting up classes within CK-12 groups or a learning management system. So consider both of those options. Um, get your teachers to do that and then also have the, your students log into the website. Um, they can sign in with a Google address, with Facebook, learning management systems like Clever, well, single sign-on like Clever and learning management systems like Canvas and Schoology. Um, you can always see these options on our tools and apps page. Um, and then that last piece is just start using your customized Flexbook and other CK-12 modalities. And you need to um, start thinking about uh, how a school or district, you know, how are you going to encourage growth or support team use? If you want this to be successful, um, you, again, you've got to build in that time and have that plan. So um, since our content is customizable, you guys are also going to want to start thinking, you know, down the line, maybe at version two, even while you're working on version one. Um, so if you're an individual or a team rolling out a customized flexbook, for instance, how are you going to continue to revise this material and make updates to the book? Um, you know, is that going to be evaluated quarterly or are you going to, you know, try using maybe a flexbook for a school year and then, you know, the next summer make revisions to it? Or, do you want to put it in the hands of teachers who have the ability to customize that on a day-by-day -day basis? Um, we have built a Jumpstart for Educators Cafe for the purpose of fostering collaboration across districts and states and even the world. Um, we offer some state-specific cafes and we just added a homeschool cafe. So that's a great place to see if other educators have the same questions um, or if as you're going through an adoption process, if you want to reach out to others. Um, to be able to do that. Um, and then throughout the year, we're going to continue here at CK12 to offer webinars and we'll continue to support you in the work that you're doing and offering new ways uh, to learn about the new resources. So you might want to consider having designated teachers within a building attend these sessions to stay current uh, and learn about the newest features on CK12. Great. So I think. At this point in time, you know, we have a couple of questions in here um, saying when signing in with Facebook, does the system access your contact information? Um, I believe it just accessed your main piece. It will give you a prompt, as it says, for what it's accessing, just like it would for other things. Um, but I remember for Google, it was basically like my email address. Um, so you can always check that when you log in and see what works from there. Um, I think at this point in time, the last question we have in here, other than the one that I'm currently answering right now, um, in terms of school's content, if you're looking for history or another topic, go ahead and search for that on our site, um, or you could look at some of the school's pages to find that information. Um, but the last question is for Dr. Nelson, so maybe we can go back in and talk to him some more. Yes, um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so we can see Dr. Nelson again. Let me turn my camera on so you don't feel like we're leaving you hanging out there. I'm, I'm still here. <laughs> awesome. Um, so we do have a question for you from a user that says, why not grades 11 and 12? So that's, that's probably an obvious place to start. When, after you guys decided you were going CK12, how did you decide what grades and what subject? Well, a lot of the reasons because uh, grades 11 and 12 did not go there is because we have a very strong AP program. And many of the AP content is dictated by their six-year adoption process. But keep in mind that each of those teachers who teach in the 11th grade and 12th grade classes are also one-to-one -one devices and using CK-12 in physical science and biology. So what they have done, instead of actually creating flexbooks specific to those course contents, they're still referencing things back and forth. It's just not the adopted title. They really felt comfortable with a physical textbook that was fully aligned to those AP expectations in almost all content areas. Uh, physics is a great example. Our AP physics program is, is pretty strong and uh, are, they are using a physical textbook aligned to those AP uh, physics contents. However, 
Uh, those students are, again, one-to-one -one devices. They're using the CK-12 content for physics in addition to uh, the, uh, the primary textbook for the course. So when you guys decided the subject and the grades, um, how did you approach, and I don't know if this was your decision or a committee of people decided, how did you figure out who was going to work on that content? So how did you select your teams and what did your timeline look like? Well, let me just kind of backtrack to the overall adoption process. We have a pretty rigorous adoption process for our district. And the first thing that we do is we put together content committees. Uh, so we have probably three to four teachers per grade level per subject area that we put together. A lot of times that's via volunteer. Uh, a couple of teachers come together and say, yes, I want to be a decision maker in this. Uh, those are the people who will go through and review CK-12 content with other content like we had talked about earlier. Uh, and then at that point, those lead teachers are also the ones who are kind of talking about our implementation strategies. So at the end of last year, when we adopted CK-12 formally, again, it was the easiest decision that our board has ever made because I didn't give them a bill to be able to, uh, to pay with either. Uh, but they basically said, okay, well, you've got this rich resource. What is it going to look like for us? And you saw a little bit about uh, the books that we have created here. So those science lead teachers came together. And they started uh, putting the course content based on our scope and sequence that we had already pre-identified. Again, we, we didn't, it, it's, it's like the chicken or the egg analogy. A lot of people on the call may say, well, the, the textbook dictates the content. To us, it's very different. Our content is our expectation. And that has already been vetted throughout our community as to what science looks like in Coeur d'Alene. So we were able to take that content and say, well, let's now match up the content that we want with CK-12 or let's add the content that we want using the brainchilds that we, we have in our district. Uh, so at that point, uh, uh, over the course of the summer, we built what we call our stock book. And then we encouraged each of our teachers to customize the book to create their own personal copy. And then over the course of the academic year, when we were using that job embedded time during the Monday collaborations, we then had the opportunity to then find out and take elements that were really resonating well with students uh, and kind of make an update so that now we have a brand new flex book that is our new stock book for the coming school year. So every year we're going to be able to take this content, look and see how it's performing, see if there's any overlap for your content as well, and then we'll be able to monitor, adjust, put, pull, add in whatever's happening around our community. So I think you just said, you said a lot of important things there, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm a former teacher, and uh, when I'm handed something from the district, I still, I still want to add my personal touch to it. I don't want to lose my voice as a classroom teacher. So um, sounds like what you guys are doing then is you're kind of all agreeing on, here's what we're going to cover in our district, and then you're giving teachers the ability to probably not subtract so much from the book, but to... Right add in their their favorite videos that are on their bookmark list or add in their own examples or their own images that correlate with their with their subject so um i i think that's an important thing to emphasize because people often forget that even once the book's been customized maybe at a, at a school or district level they can click customize again in their own classroom and create their own book I have to argue with you, first of all, you're never oh. a former teacher. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're, you're always a teacher. <laughs> In my uh, previous life when I wasn't running these webinars and, you know, was, was no, but younger. I, I think what we're talking about is exactly <laughs> the same thing. Teachers are empowered by the work of their students. You know, when, when students start talking about something and you deliver the content as prescribed by your district scope and sequence, you have to also recognize that people are going to go in different areas. It depends on what's going on in the world, what the environment and their culture around them is feeling about a particular topic. Uh, so, you know, we can go through, uh, for instance, I know in our, in our earth science classes that are about the eighth grade, there's been a lot of discussion about planets and really what are planets. And now NASA has found a brand new solar system. And, and what does life look like outside of Earth? And that's a very ethereal question. And with CK-12 content, we were able to kind of navigate that well enough. And our, and our science lead teacher in eighth grade, Mike Emery, uh, then was able to put in content the next day in his textbook that or in his flex book that allowed students to then look at what science or what NASA had discovered, what are they perceiving 
what are these uh, these new rovers put on Mars? What are they doing? It really engaged the students. Then they were able to take that content back and say, well, how does that come in? Uh, CK-12 does not create robots. It actually creates a, a very rich content discussion uh, throughout our area, throughout our, our school district, so that teachers have the ability to listen and to be able to adapt more than they've ever been done before. You know, we as content developers, we we put a document into people's hands, and you can always get these uh, if you would like up on our district website, and I'll give you the address to all of that if you'd like. But we ask them to then, here's your course content, here's your scope and sequence, now go. But no two classrooms are alike. So CK12 gives us the basis to be able to do it, but again, like I said, it has that flexibility that we could come back at the end of the year and say, well, what really did resonate, and what are the things that really students were grappling with? and then adjust along the way. We'd never be able to do that without a tool like CK12. Uh, we love hearing that, that's awesome. You guys are such a great success story for us. Um, to, to be a little conscious of time as we're kind of approaching the hour mark, um, we had one question, it's, it's very important. It is, what does the sign behind you say? We can read <laughs> hard work and feels, Hard work done well feels good. Okay, mystery solved. We know what the sign says. Um, Sorry, Mike. We're gonna do we're gonna do a little bit of just program wrap up information. But do you mind hanging around for a few minutes? And um, we'll we'll turn the cameras off, and I'm gonna let Katie do some wrap up. But if we have a few users with questions, can you stay on for another couple minutes? Absolutely. And in the chat room okay. uh, or in the chat window, I'll actually put my email address as well. If anybody ah, would like you're to reach brave. out to us you're brave. as a district, see any of our content, uh, we'll be more than glad to provide any of those links for you. That's awesome. I'm sure they appreciate it. Okay. So, so, so stay on um, and we'll, we'll come back to you here in a couple minutes. So we had a great comment as Lindsay switches over that um, from one of our users where they said, does everyone want to go work in Coeur d'Alene? I do. Um, I think, yep, it's fantastic to have great educators here. And I'm sure that your schools and districts, hopefully you guys are all on here, are building those communities as well. Um, so I think with that, we're going to, as Lindsay said, kind of wrap things up. So we have assignments for all of you doing the Certified Educator Pathway. Um, the short URL for today's is tinyurl.com, CEP17 adopt for adopting CK12 curriculum. Um, so you can go straight there using the URL or go to our program page and access it from this session. Um, that program page is ck12.org slash certified 2017. And under that session info and resources is where you'd find today's session and the matching assignment. Um, and then always at the bottom are the recorded um, webinars. So give us like 24 hours to get those up there. They're usually up even earlier, um, but that way we can make sure everything's loaded and accessed and all set to go. Um, and then we, you know, this is our first full summer of this program. And so we love to hear your feedback and continue to improve. Um, we're starting another round of intro sessions again after the fourth. So definitely let us know what we can do to make the next round of users um, have an even more successful time. Um, and then as always, email us at support. If you have any questions, um, you can sign up for our office hours on our program page. Um, you can share on social media or on our cafe. Um, and you can ask us kind of questions in support if you're struggling using our site for any reason, but hopefully this program is taking care of those questions for you. Um, so we had one question one more time for the assignment URL. It should be in the chat window, um, so you should be able to see that shortly, and we'll go from there. Um, Dr. Nelson, as promised, put in the chat window some information, but uh, Dr. Nelson, you broke the golden rule. You only sent it to panelists, so would you mind sending that again? Change <laughs> on, on the chat window to all panelists and uh, attendees before people sign off. We want to make sure that they, they have access to your contact information. I can do it. I apologize. No, 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 no worries. I just want to make sure that everybody, everybody can see it. So, um, so yeah, for those of you who need to head off the webinar, you're welcome to do so. But um, you've got three of us here ready to answer any of your guys' questions that you have. So, let's see. Katie's got one. She's gonna feel. Um, so we we had just one more question about where the assignments are. Maybe Lindsay, you can go back to that program page slide for one second. 
Um, so if you go here, today's assignment was that adopt one, but all of our assignments and resources and everything you need for this program are on ck12.org slash certified 2017. And if you're on any page on CK12 that has our general footer with all our links, the one that links to certified educator program will take you to this page. So once there, you can go down, see where it says session information and resources, and below that is each session title. So go to the one on adopting and you'll find all the resources and assignment for this session. Okay, so while we're waiting to see if there are any formal questions, um, one question, um, Dr. Nelson, that we had for you that we didn't get to, which I kind of like, is the, what was your biggest aha moment in adopting CK12? Um, maybe as, as we're kind of wrapping this up of like, what are your biggest tips to educators or those things that you learned that you, you, don't, you don't know what you don't know? So like, what, is, what are the things that you want to pass on um, that you've learned in this process? Well, the, one of the first things that I could say is that don't be afraid of, of the, the platform. Uh, the first thing that I would say is we have a lot of esteemed teachers in our district, and by esteemed, I mean people who've been teaching in our district for a long time. And there was absolutely some reticence about moving to a platform like CK12 because it's just not – a constant paradigm that they're used to. They're used to having that, that physical book in their hands. Uh, but we were able to move forward because of some of the decisions that we made in the district's infrastructure and because of the fact that we have BYOD as a district. And for us to be able to make the switch uh, to CK-12 and really uh, start that took a couple of times for us to be able to walk through some of our teachers we had some, uh, some background information uh, that was provided to them once we really identified them as a, as a finalist. But again, keep in mind, when the finalists were all decided at that point, CK-12 had nothing. I mean, you, we didn't have fancy brochures. We didn't have these beautiful uh, boxes of materials that were shared back and forth because when it all came down to it, the content in the book or on CK-12 was pretty much the same. But it's about the engagement of the students when we did the pilots in the classroom and they started delivering some content via CK-12 that they could really see that this was something that resonated with them well. Um, so from there, I, I said, you know, the biggest aha moment is making sure that we are future driven and we have the opportunity for us to be able to use this platform to be able to drive instruction. Uh, to us, the content is king, and the content is there in CK-12, but at the same time, it's how the students have been using it that was really great to watch. And we, we hear that from so many districts that, you know, why are we still spending a fortune on these books that, um, like you said, you were able to have a, a book updated the next day when, when science changed. Um, when you a textbook can't do that. And so it, it's just kind of crazy to think of these books that are still sitting on a shelf that are already outdated and that, you know, kids don't enjoy and that never match your scope and sequence of what your teachers are actually wanting to teach. So um, I'm just so glad that CK12 is, has been a, a, a good solution for you. And, um, and you guys, you, you know, from talking to you, you said that you guys are such a forward facing district that it seems like you're always kind of ahead of the next big initiative and, not wanting to look back at the old school things. Yeah, we, we are very lucky that the focus of our district has always been on our students. And we recognize that if students aren't engaged in our classrooms, if they don't have the opportunity to be able to explore their learning at deep levels, that they're not gonna wanna spend time here. We live in a society now that there are so many different options and students will vote with their feet. Uh, and why not have a tool that is engaging for both our teachers and our students? Well, one of our users just typed in that, Dr. Nelson, I think it's really awesome what you and your school district have done with CK-12. It's truly inspirational. It is quite oh, obvious you. that you have put a great deal of thought and care into this plan and to your students. Well, I'm, I'm surrounded by great people, and uh, we have a lot of forward-thinking people within our district. That's very kind of you, Denise, but at the same time, you know, we have a very forward-thinking district, and uh, we are always glad to share. So 
uh, don't be afraid to use the resources that are on our district website or ask us. We'll share any of our content uh, with you at any time. Well, thank you so much for being here today, and thank you Wonderful. to all of our um, users. I think we're going to go ahead and um, sign off. So um, we will see you all again soon. Have a thank good day. You. All right. Bye-bye.